So we're going to have a look at the micro bit Python editor, which is slightly different. If you go to uh, this page, which is python.microbit.org, you will find that there's a slightly different editor to what we had before. We'll allow cookies and you can watch this video if you like, uh, but I'm going to take you through it anyway. And by default, I've got a few things going on there. Now, this is different to the make code editor that we've used before, or we might have seen. And that is a drag and drop uh, scenario, the make code, uh, sorry, make code dot micro bit dot Python there. And this is slightly different because when you do a new project here, like test, it could again take you through an intro here, but I'll skip this. But you can drag and drop areas or icons and different things here, play around, very easy. You can have a look what that looks like in JavaScript, and you can even drop it to Python. But this can be quite difficult and isn't really like proper Python. It's a kind of version of it because here you can see, for example, when we flick back to the actual editor that I want us to use today, at the very beginning, it says imports and it's got a comment and it imports the micro bit library. So as it should, as Python does with libraries that you need to bring in. Um, so this is a kind of a truer Python for me and one that I think will help us a bit more. So right now, if I press play, it's just going to be a heart pauses for a second when it says sleep and then it says hello that's it simple as if you want that to go for longer it's going to keep repeating that because it's in a while true loop and if i do that for 2000 milliseconds it pauses for two seconds then says hello now we've got other options down the side here if we want to change the brightness the temperature the compass setting microphone levels button presses lots of things that we can do here and we'll go into more detail as these projects keep going for today, I just want us to have a little play around and I want you to investigate yourself a few little uh, ideas. So right here, if I wanted to change from heart, I could go using this wonderful reference library at the side here. When you click the display menu, we've got heart. But if I change that to dark, you know, we can just drag this in over here. Now you'll notice that depending on where you drag this will have a difference on where it goes. Now, right now, I'm just going to drag this above the heart. I'm going to get rid of this extra sleep that it had that it gave me because that was the demonstration purpose. And I'm also going to get rid of the heart as well. And then when I press play, it's going to do duck. Now, the advantage to just writing that yourself is that you know that the syntax, the way it works, the dots and everything are in the right place. But now I can look at this and look to Pac-Man, for example, and see that it's just going into here and doing Pac-Man. And you could see there, it even gave me scenarios. So we've got the Pac-Man there. So if I delete this and then I do the dot, you can see now it's going to suggest to me all these other parts. So I can have a butterfly and I can press play and there's the butterfly. So you can do a bit of a combination, learning how to get how to make it look like it should and get all the syntax right, and then also using the suggestion boxes in here. There are also other things you can do, like the showing images here when I press play, and you'll see in two seconds, well, I should have paused there, really, because it just showed the image and went on. So that's why that one didn't work make sure that see, it's trying to tell me there with the red arrow I wasn't in line with what it was there when I copy and pasted so I press play and you see here how it's faded the image was faded and that shows you the brightness of those values there so nine being uh, the brightest and zero being off and you can have a blurry or well, kind of faded uh, images in between so useful things and that's why we should just play around and have a go at displaying everything you've got a display clear here and stick that in underneath the sleep maybe put another sleep in here and this is what we're playing around with um, each time so we've got the butterfly two seconds it clears 
waits two seconds, and then does the hello. So this will give you all the examples that you want to try and play with, uh, set pixels, all those kind of things, and we can go around and start having a look at more. So we can also have button presses, loops, variables, all the things that we've been talking about. But we have to make sure that we're doing it correctly. So what I quite often like to do when I'm playing around with this is always delete everything, including the while true, which probably means we should get rid of this comment as well. Never get rid of this import micro bit. We'll go to the buttons. And here we can choose which buttons to press. And if I go in and press the button A, it brings in another while true loop. So maybe we should have left that uh, comment in there. And when I press A, it just says A. Now be careful here, because if we choose B, and I come in and I drag this in here, I've made an error. And if you can spot it already, that's really good. But the error here is, if I press play and do B, nothing happens. I can press A and try and put B. There you go, something came up. And it's because this command is only going to be available if I've pressed A. I dragged it, the indent, incorrectly. What I should have done when I dragged this in was dragged it in line with the under the true. Okay, I could put it one up if I want, but I want to put a little bit of space in there to make it more obvious. And now, when I press A, the A happens, but I don't have to press that, then this, I can just press the B straight away. So the indents are going to make a, make a huge difference to how you do this work. And you've got other buttons and, and A, B as well, and you've got some things here about how to count button presses. So maybe you've got a game where you can do a timer um, for 10 seconds, see how many times you can press buttons. Uh, that's an idea for a game. And then we have things like loops, but we already did a true loop. So I'm not going to go into this into too much detail, but I am going to say that if we only want to run something for a number of times, then we need this for I in range. And then we say how many times. So this one would show that three times. Okay. So we can use loops. Uh, but what I really want to talk about are things like logic, because if we come to the logic, what we need to have a look at, as well as temperature and light, is we need to show that there's more options. Because right now, we've got things or just examples here. And this one says, create a variable, score equals one. If the score is less than one, show a sad image. And then we would have to do a button press to add score to be more than one, for example. And then we could have a happy sign okay so we can do these things but if we click more we will get other examples so we've got also if and then else's so if the score equals six uh that there it's actually saying it doesn't it's saying score equals six if it's less than two show a sad then show a meh then show a happy now this one's more useful because if i drag this down into here. Now be careful again where you drag these into because I'm just going to score it here. At the moment, we've got this variable, um, but we didn't need to have it while looping all the time. We could have had this actually just at the top here as a statement. Okay. Now, We've got difficulties that we're going to have here because this is where I want us to learn what's going to happen here. So we've got this idea that score equals six and if score is less than and all this kind of stuff here. So how do we move that on? Well, instead of displaying a scroll, or maybe I can display a number one or something like that, but I'm not going to. Um, I'm going to actually do a display and show. So we've got the images. I don't want to scroll it. I want to show the score. So we've got the show, which we're allowed to do now. And we've got this variable score now that it's in here. So if I test this out and press A, we've got six. Okay. Now, what we can do here is we can show the score or we can add to it. So what I'm going to have here is um, score equals score plus one. 
Okay. And sometimes you don't need the space. You do. Sometimes we like it. So make sure we spell everything correctly. And we press the button. We've got seven now. Okay, because I've done it plus one. So here, what I really need to do is copy this code and for B, place it in. Make sure we've got things lined up as we do here. It's trying to tell me not, but except this one is minus one. Now, reason why I've done this is we got the five, then we got the four, then we got the three, then we got the two. But what we see here is where's the images gone? Now, they're not going here because that was happening when we started it off. When we started this program off, it gave me a happy face because the score is greater than six. It wasn't less than two, which is sad. It wasn't less than six, which was meh. But what happened was that only happened once at the beginning of the program. So while you can call variables at the beginning, if you want something to keep saying, then what you need to do here is we need to also drag in or put these things in to different areas like while it's true. Now, I don't need to say what the score is again. That's a bit rubbish. But now when I press play and move stuff up, we've got more of a concept that I can keep changing. We've got the mare and we've got the sad, but we're not showing the scores anymore. We can't do that because we've basically not done a pause in here. So what I need to do is show the score and then sleep for maybe a second. Now, when I press this button, it will show the score and then show me that. So we've got to remember that things that we do here, unless we tell them to stop and pause for a second, are just going to happen immediately. We're not going to see it. But now we've got the concept where I can make it go meh, meh, and show the score. Or maybe I don't want to show that. Maybe I want people to work it out. If I go back up, we got the meh. So we can use variables, but using things that always check what's happening, always have to go in the while true. And we can have individual items in there as well. So these indents are really, really important for us to have a look at. We do also have uh, more if else's that come on here, not just uh, logic. Uh, we've got other examples there. We can actually do things when, especially if we press more, if the acceler accelerometer re uh, records a shake, do something. We've also got um, maths lists that we've looked at. Functions will come to different sessions, radio between other applications. But we've also got things like light level. OK, so if I go into light, it just says display the light. So I can show the score and maybe display the light level at the same time. But what you I, I don't know why they don't do this. If you press more straight away, it gives you the example of if the read level is below. That's the one I wanted. So like here with the score, I could get rid of all of this. I could drag this new example when I pressed more. And now if it's less than 50, it's going to display a heart. Otherwise, it's clear. So let's go to the light here and drop it below 50. There's the heart. So I don't know why I'd want a clear here. Maybe I'd want uh, some other icons. And the same thing happens when you look at things like, uh, as we just scroll down, temperature and compass. Temperature, yeah, okay, but I want the more to show me what happens. Now here it's not doing the same thing, right? So what we've got now is displayed, read, read, and it's going to be temperature. So if I stick in there, and I'm a little bit disappointed it doesn't give you that same example. So if I now say read uh, temperature, in fact, there, if we look back at what I did, oh, pardon me. Oh, there we go. They're all gone wrong there. Let's go back one and have a look at that. So now if we go down to the light level again, so it goes to nothing. Don't worry about things. Go to light level, press more, drag this in. What we want to do is read other items like uh, the temperature. So if I go to it, uh, display temperature, and I've got read uh, temperature level potentially. So because I'm not sure, and I just thought it might be temperature there, it didn't come up with any examples. But when I do the display read 
an underscore is giving me the different options that are available. So it doesn't seem like the temperature read is available. I'm sure it is in there somewhere, or maybe it's maybe a feature to come, but that's how we can test. If something isn't coming up, go all the way back, start to retype it, and it will show you what the available um, items are. Uh, we've also got things like compass, there and we can actually uh, there we go uh, magnetic strength uh, we can then have a look at other options like sound and microphone so I've shown you loads of different options have a look at the ideas have a look at things like the emotion badge have a look at things like the activity picker so today's kind of competition is to make something in Python that impresses so before we were looking at the drag and drop model you can just get rid of everything all the way up to making sure we import stuff. But if you do want to do things like dice, do remember that we need to also import things like random. So at the very top, top here, I would also import, and then I would have random. And there we go. And we've got other different things. As soon as I pressed the space and typed in the R, we've got different things like import radio if I want to communicate. So if I just kind of scroll through the, the letters, it will show you what the availabilities are. So here I wanted random, and then I can get started with everything else going on. So have a look at that. Keep going with this uh, and just try and come up with something impressive yourself.